Hi, everyone. Good morning and welcome. This is Ramola D. This is Technogram Fighters Forum, episode number 55. It's the 5th of April, 2018. I'm here this morning with Dr. Catherine Horton from Zurich, Switzerland. I'm very happy to he be here with her. Um, we're not entirely certain if um, Karen Stewart is going to be joining us this morning. Um, I do know that Dr. Black may have may be having a doctor's appointment, so she may not be able to join us. But, you know, you never know. They may join us later. So, hi, Catherine. Good morning. Um, and, um, you know, perhaps I should just open by just telling people again what we're all about and what we're doing. Um, Technocrime Fighters Forum is just a group of human rights advocates who are speaking out about the extraordinary amount of surveillance abuse that is ongoing currently in the USA in the UK, in Europe, and in the world. And uh, we're also reporting the use of electromagnetic weapons on civilians everywhere, all around the world, the Five Eyes countries, as well as pretty much every continent, um, you know, run by the global intelligence agencies and by the global militaries, etc. And, um, you know, all of these are obviously non-consensual assaults on the populace. And they also include non-consensual experimentation with neuro and bio and chemical weapons. So on that note, uh, today's conversation, we are really going to be talking about what's going on currently with us, uh, both with Catherine and with myself, um, and the fact that all the work that we are doing with the podcast that we are doing and the information that we're trying to get out to the public, uh, we, of course, are, you know, once again in the spotlight and we are getting hammered. So we kind of wanted to report on some of the ways in which we are being wrongfully, illegitimately and illegally assaulted. Because we shouldn't be. We are doing human rights advocacy is what we are doing. And we are doing journalism. So in, you know, in an ideal world, in a just world, none of us should be being hit. And yet we are. So we want to talk a little bit about that. We also want to talk about Julian Assange and the situation there with Julian Assange. And we'll go into length at, um, about that. As many people may know, Julian's um, internet connectivity was cut off recently. And there was all sorts of nonsense about, you know, perhaps it was due to a tweet that he sent out. And so basically they are censoring him. They are taking away his freedom of speech, his freedom of expression, uh, his ability to communicate, his ability to be connected with the outside world and also his ability to be connected with his own family. So we're really going to take a long, hard look at uh, why and how Julian is being kept incarcerated in the Ecuadorian embassy virtually by the British government. And no doubt they come forward and say he's not really incarcerated, he's free to go out and pay bail, but we all know what might happen if he stepped out of that embassy, right? He's going to be arrested and sent off to the US. And we, again, we know how the US treats people who are journalists and truth tellers uh, and people who are helping the rest of humanity wake up and become aware of the horrors and carnage of war. So we hope to go into that in great detail today. So Catherine, how are you doing? And uh, did you want to start off and give us a little bit of news? I know you've been working on a very important letter, uh, the neighborhood letter. So perhaps you can tell us a little bit about that. Um, oh, you know, yes, absolutely. Um, in fact, I'm, I was just in the, while you were doing the introduction, I was just um, sh um, clicking things uh, live. So um, let me just uh, do a test. Um, so let's see if it works or not. And then people can tell me in the chat. So um, one of the things I was working on uh, for quite some time, and now I finished the letter, is I wanted to inform the neighborhoods. Okay, so I wanted uh, all the neighbors around every victim to know what's going on. We know that some neighbors must be perps because Dr. Ronnie Kilda said that neighbors are always involved. I experienced that neighbors are all involved, and you know, um, there are always some neighbors involved in this targeting. They are involved in surveillance, but also in um, hosting, certainly hosting, and some of the even using the weapons, the direct energy weapons on the victims. Um, but the danger is that if you can't just go around and accuse neighbors because either it's going to count as slander or as aggressive accusations, or if in Switzerland, it will be actually, um, you know, lead to a tort because here they have this funny law which is uh, called insult to honor. You're not allowed to insult Swiss men's or women's, but I think mostly men's, Anna. Um, and I think that's an artifact of the fact, personally. I think that's because all the world's criminals like to hang out here, so you're not allowed to call them criminals. Um, but on a less cynical note, this is a serious problem because if you just even say, you know, I think I'm being attacked by Mr. So-and-so, 
they can put a counterclaim uh, against you and say this is an insult to their honor. And unless you can prove it exactly, you have you know uh, damaged their honor and you are liable to pay some tort. Uh, so the way around that, um, because there has to be a way around that, you can't just let criminals get away with it. But on the other hand, it is a serious issue. So for example, the anti-corruption campaigner Gerhard Ulrich, he was in court because of insult to Anna, even though the man who in accused him of insult to Anna was a Freemason who it has been proved had set his neighbor's barn on fire to burn down his own home to claim you know, money from the insurance. And he, he seemed to have cheated insurance out of over a million Swiss francs. But still, you're not allowed to call him a criminal, apparently here in Switzerland, because then the criminal will sue you for insult to Anna. So that's, that's how bad it is here. So I had to find a Swiss way around it. And my trick was to inform the entire neighborhood campaign and not accuse anybody particular of being a perp, but say four people, in my case, four people have to be perps because I'm being shot at from all directions. So the trick I would like to use is to say four people have to be perps, but the other ones are actually potential victims who in turn have a tort claim against the perp. uh can people still hear me i'm just watching the live um, stream as well so let me just um place a question um can you still see me uh perhaps you still can i seem to have come back okay i'll continue talking um it seems to be the case that ramola was cut off it happened before she was sabotaged earlier um Okay, so you guys can hear, fantastic. Okay, onwards, onwards. So um, what I wanted to say is, oh, Ramola's back, okay. <laughs> Excellent. People can hear me again. So Ramola is back, even though you can't see her. So um, the trick is the following. Um, you inform the entire neighborhood. You don't say who the perpetrator is. And you make the entire information campaign about informing the neighbors that they have a tort claim, you know, a possible tort claim against the government because you can develop cancer, but so can other people who are, you know, uh, well, the key thing is actually a, a, um, an effect from physics, which is if you shoot a microwave beam through a wall, up to 50% gets reflected. So if you uh, shoot at somebody at a slanted angle, you know, it might, the back reflection might not hit you, but the reflection will go off and hit another neighbor. So if they are shooting from the same direction always, then part of the shots hit me inside or part of the radiation, and the other half of the radiation will hit always the same neighbor. And this means that if I can get cancer, the other neighbor can get cancer as well. Okay, so this is actually based on, on real life uh, physics here. Now, one of the things I wanted to show you, if I can just share my screen, I would like to share what I... Um, I did because I am going to inform my neighborhood, um, so my neighborhood here, and I've drafted a letter. I put in explanatory diagrams and all that sort of stuff, um, and you know I've I've put in a map of the area and tried to explain everything and also try to explain the bigger picture. And then I printed it off and I actually uh, want to show you. I've got an entire bag full of ready-made letters. It just says you know to the neighbors. It's like this big, totally totally filled with just letters and they will be distributed straight after the show tonight but um i also shared um i want to share this uh letter that i i'm going to distribute here so if you go to stop 007 my website here there's a campaign to inform the neighborhood so if you click on that uh you're getting through to this um information campaign and there in the first, well, the second paragraph is the important one, but because there I explain the system judo move that's involved here, okay? So the key is that the neighbors can also claim damages from the government, especially the secret service and the military, should they develop health problems like cancer, okay? So you are doubling the people who you are doubling or tripling or quadrupling the people who potentially support you in court, okay? Now, the other thing is, that's also very important, there's no limitation period, so no time limit on claims if these are crimes against humanity, which these are, because it's an international genocide, the number of victims is staggering, The uh, it's all premeditated, conducted over years and years with the aim of maiming and killing, 
Okay, so the scale and the, the covertness and the, the sheer evil of it makes it, uh, you know, qualifies it for crimes against humanity. And the other thing that's a key is that the perpetrators can be tried in national as well as international courts and tribunals. So, for example, I can take uh, the Swiss, uh, the head of the Swiss Secret Service to court here in Switzerland, but I can also take them to court in any of the jurisdictions that have signed the International um, War Crime Tribunal Treaty or the International whatever Criminal Court Tri Treaty, whatever it is. So I can I think I've got 160 16 countries to choose from. So if the Swiss Secret Service corrupts all the Swiss judges, I might be better off going to literally Trinidad and Tobago and have them tried there. But it can still have repercussions within Switzerland. Now, the other thing that the perps are not told is they are being irradiated also. And um, you know that's partially because of back reflections at them, but partially because they are to be killed off as well as the main witnesses to this. And then the, the final point is that this is all part of one big international genocide that has been planned. So on this page, you can find the letter that I'm going to distribute to the neighbors here. And um, you can look and read through it. You know, there's a German and, uh, sorry, this is the German version. So there's the German version, there's an English translation. And I'll show you what kind of stuff I put in. So I've got an explanatory diagram, which I took from Dr. Reinhard Munzert's site, which explains how at every wall 50%, um, you know, gets filtered out. But then what this diagram doesn't say is where do the 50% go? Well, those are all back reflections, okay? So if you hit a wall frontally, 50% hits the actual perpetrator. And then the, the what's really important is this diagram. So I show how when you have, let me make this bigger. If you have a perpetrator shooting a microwave weapon at you, so there's a kink because every single time an electromagnetic weapon goes through a density interface, there's this kink, okay? You also have this effect underwater and so on. But you have it with microwaves and house walls as well. So, you know, part of it get, um, passes through and part of it gets reflected and hits another neighbor. So if this is your favorite, uh, you know, TV sofa, and that's his favorite TV sofa, and he's sitting always at the same point relative to you, he will be irradiated over the two years that you have been irradiated, okay? Um, and the, the actual radiation dose is staggering. So in other words, as soon as you have one single victim of a microwave weapon that's being shot through walls, there are, by the laws of physics, more than one victim. Okay, and with microwave radiation, particularly microwaves and house walls, it's 50-50. Okay, so this is this is the key, right? This is how a perp will shoot at himself, you know, um, and the handlers don't tell them because the handlers don't want to reveal that what they want to do in the setup for the genocide is that they want to kill the victim and they want to kill the main witness, you know, the low earning little minion. So this is in it and at the very end i've got more explanatory diagrams you know how you can be um, irradiated inside a home from a neighbor you know from a satellite dish a magnetron or maybe a suitcase um, in a parked car as well you know so there's all these different options and this particular image again from dr reinhard monsert um, was made by two certified engineers okay so this is uh, you can use this in court and then also what I include in this uh, neighborhood campaign is I draw their attention to the fact that although I'm the victim here, there's an active shooter zone. So the inner circle includes every single home, okay, that has a direct line of sight onto my um, property or um, onto my home, but there's a much bigger danger zone around. And this is the zone that gets irradiated by scatter shots or gets irradiated directly by the perps. Because if I have a perp somewhere on the outer periphery, he can shoot inward at me or outward. And there's some indication from the evidence I've received that that's exactly what perps do. They will earn money by killing you off and they will earn money by killing somebody else off that they can reach. Okay. Two birds with one stone kind of thing. And then the very last, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm also highlighting and explaining individual homes and always I don't accuse a single person. I just say these white circles, they are either perpetrators or victims themselves. 
because of these back reflections. So that is the key, okay? So these are these diagrams. And then what I also include is these plant genocide rates um, that have been revealed on this um, intelligence uh, gathering organization site called deagle.com. And that one is more serious than it looks at first glance. It um, reports about uh, weapons and, um, you know, uh, what's it called? Like fighter jet uh, purchases of countries internationally and so on and so on. So it is actually an intelligence gathering organization. Okay, so this is all in the letter, but what I want to offer you as the viewer is first of all, you can see my letter and please download it and back it up for court cases. You can quote my letter in German and in English, but I also made templates. So these are open office writer templates. So this is like Microsoft Word, but for free. And you can just click the template, um, change the yellow highlighting to suit your needs. And then you can use the very same letter, okay? I also include the actual images here for genocide rates according to deagle.com for the US, for the UK, for Germany and Switzerland. And, um, and then finally, what I'm about to upload literally this moment will be a YouTube video. So it's just being uploaded here. Okay, it's called, it will be called the neighborhood campaign once I hit this publish button. And this is um, a one hour introduction or over one hour is where I explain in detail how this neighborhood campaign works, but most importantly, how to make those uh, Google Maps um, screenshots and highlights that I used. So this entire video is about how can you make the exact same diagrams for your own personal court cases or for your personal neighborhood campaign. So. The invite to everybody who reads the letter and likes it or who likes the template or who just likes the idea is to please take part. I'm going to uh, walk around my neighborhood um, you know, this evening. As soon as I'm off techno at seven o'clock, I'm going to offload this entire bag full of letters to my neighbors and I'm going to inform them that they've got a potential tort claim against the government. And I think that should uh, you know, get Things rocking, according to my calculation. I also expect some sort of blowback. So if I get arrested by the police, even though I'm not doing anything legal, in fact, I'm following, I'm also saying this in the letter, I'm following my legal and my moral duty to inform the neighbors that their health and life might be at risk as well. So if you like this campaign, then please join me, you know, take part in it. Uh, you can do it at the same time as me, and then we can compare, you know, feedback and uh, resonance or blowback, <laughs> and we can fight <laughs> against it together. Yes, I think that's absolutely brilliant, Kat. Oh boy, I'm hearing an echo. Oh, hang on, let me put in um, put in headphones. I'll put um, put on mute. Okay. All right. So um, I actually had a few questions for you. So whenever you can come back online when your mic is working, okay. So you can explain a little bit further, you know, perhaps how we can um, use pretty much the same format and template. Certainly, I think you've um, talked about Google Earth, right? Going to Google Earth and mapping your own you know, area of residence, your own property and kind of figuring out um, how you're being hit. So everybody can do that on their own. But then the other stuff, you know, because obviously you're the physicist here, you're the expert. How can we use your expertise and that portion of your letter, you know, where you are talking about that whole issue? Do you have like a base template that people can use? Um, yes, absolutely. So the entire, um, the idea behind this neighborhood campaign is that if people, um, let me just show you again. Uh, so here, uh, so I didn't actually show the template letter itself. Um, if people click on the stuff that looks uh, kind of yellow here, they'll get an, a template that looks uh, absolutely identical to my letter here. Okay, and um, it has all the text. I've highlighted the areas yellow where, for example, my name and address, where people would have to change something to um, suit their own case. Um, and I try to keep the letter as general as possible. And the idea is that <clears throat> this image, for example, is a certified image by Dr. Reinhard Monsert, and I can confirm that this is true. This is the laws of physics here. This is exactly how it goes. So this is a certified image. You can, you're, you're free to use it 
Um, I think Dr. Reinhard Munz had made it available specifically so campaigns like these can use them. So I've just, uh, what I changed um, here is I changed the text from uh, German to English. Oh, sorry, by the way, I should show you the English letter so that you can read what I'm showing you. Um, the other images here, this I made myself. And that is just simple laws of physics. It will also be in the template letters. So you can just leave it in and you can, you know, uh, quote that. Uh, I also have a scientific paper uh, where these the 50% is quoted. I think it's, oh, it's 40, 48% or something like that, 47% um, that is reflect, uh, goes through and then 63 is, um, no, sorry, 40, 43% or 47% is reflected. Now that scientific paper I was looking for and um, I have sent it around to the team about, I think, half a year ago. And as soon as I find it, I will also, um, you know, make it available. And then you can put a footnote or, you know, an actual reference. I should also say that this letter has some references here, some footnotes to WikiLeaks. You know, the WikiLeaks explained, for example, what Deagle actually is and how widely it's uh, used and so on. And you can use every single one of these images here, like this one as well. So you can use all these laws of physics um, images. And then in the YouTube video that I'm about to uh, publish, I, I show you how to make these Google Maps diagrams. So this you can make yourself to um, use your own area where you live. Um, and also this one, I'll, I'll show you how to make this one. Um, and then the final one, you just have to either pick one of these standard countries where I've, um, you know, already made the image, or you generate it yourself with Deagle, and that's also in my um, instructional video. So everything to do with the laws of physics, you can just quote straight as it is in the letter. That's great. Thanks so much, Catherine, for that. Because, um, you know, I guess, um, what about the actual language, you know, because you've got it all set up for, you know, obviously your situation, and it's the Swiss police and the Swiss situation, etc. So um, that those parts, obviously, people can change, right? Exactly. So um, what I did is I adopted um, in the templates, I changed um, everything that says Swiss, I just removed it and I highlighted it to include either American or German or something else, or I removed it entirely. So the template should be totally generic. So if you just Brilliant. stick to the yellow highlights, you can just use the template as it is. And all of this is on your website and that's what you were just showing us, right? Yes, exactly. Great. Wonderful. So we can all get started on this campaign. I have some ideas for a neighborhood campaign as well, and I'm hoping I can work with somebody to help me develop a flyer. And this is in connection and relation to the recent um, interview I did with Gerald Sosby. Now, um, as you know, Gerald Sosby is a very important interview uh, um, whistleblower because an interviewee because he is ex-FBI, you know, he was special agent at the FBI and he kind of has an insider's awareness of how the FBI work. And he's revealing a great deal about how he thinks they work. And no doubt it's his opinion, but you know, it's, I think we can call it a very informed opinion, right? Oh, so, gosh, yes. yes. Actually, so, just, sorry, just one thing. I, I noticed one thing. When I looked at the chat, I realized that the screen doesn't change away from me back to you when you're speaking. So maybe you have to press the highlight to force. Um... Okay, I'll do that. You know, I did that the last time and I went back and looked at that video and uh, I had actually been pressing and yeah. I have pressed right now. I've I've highlighted the square. Overridden. What's it's happening just... now? So it's hang on. Overridden? Yeah, I think I, I always have to look at the chat and I can just see myself. So okay. while you're talking, um, you know. You know what we could try? Because you know what they're doing? They, uh, and I think we figured this out in one of our conversations. They move the controls between you and me. So I think perhaps if you go ah. into the control room. Hang on. I've yeah, just, I, I just I tried. There's an opportunity to do something like that. Okay. I, unfortunately, it doesn't allow me to um, <clears throat> use the controls on my end. And when I click on your image, it, it still doesn't show you, um, which is really annoying. Because, for example, if you share your screen, it still doesn't show it, you know. What about and if, if I try to highlight you? What happens then? Now I'm highlighting you. Hang on. Then let me highlight you. Uh, <laughs> still, still, I'm the only person who can be seen on the screen, which is really yeah. annoying. So it's they did this to us the last time as well. You know, yeah. there's something I don't know what they're trying to do, but they're trying to kind of cut me out of the picture in a sense, but, you know, in terms of video. And last time I remember they totally massacred and mangled my audio in places as well. Yeah. Um, very this is 
I, I you know what I, I keep going back to that incident because uh the incident when you reported uh, Millicent's case, then you had the Tennessee van parked in your street, and mm -hmm. then they started sabotaging everything you did online. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. This is one of the standard, really moronic, dumb, Randy Webster sort of things to do. You know. Yeah, I know, and this controls. is why I needed to. I do need to get off Hangouts, and I've just been so busy this week. I couldn't do it, you know. But next week, I promise, we're going to be in better shape. We're not going to be on Hangouts, and we're not going to have to deal with this nonsense. Um, you know, clearly Google is falling flat over here. It's a, this is censorship. I think we can call this censorship. Yeah. This is messing with, you know, our podcast and messing with our video and audio streams. Um, I would call that censorship and gatekeeping and God knows what else. So, I would call it sabotage and criminality. You know, there you go. Criminality, I do. You know? Absolutely. It is criminal. They have no right to do this, you know. Yeah absolutely no right to do this so they're infringing on all of our rights you know our privacy rights our human rights our freedom of speech our first amendment everything absolutely so, but we have to continue on i guess so um one of the things that we can do is if you want to share or show something i can just um you know share my screen and then you can talk and people can hear you i think and then they can see the screen which is less disconcerting than just seeing me listening to, to you you know okay so, so if you okay why uh, while i'm talking about the gerald sosby interview perhaps if you wanted to share that um, yes. article i did you know with the transcript actually on my front page i think at this point in time actually let me just bring it up so um <clears throat> Okay, so hopefully people can see my screen. Yes, so I'm now an everyday concerned citizen here. And indeed, the first um, article here is uh, Ramul Adi reports 56, Gerald Sosby, FBI whistleblower reports massive crime by FBI. That's the article here. So mm -hmm. I encourage everybody to go there. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Catherine. So, you know, I just sort of wrote a little preface for um, the transcript over there where I kind of pointed up a couple things from the interview that, you know, I found completely astonishing. Um, one of them has to do with the fact that Gerald really believes it's the FBI that's going around in our neighborhoods and defaming us, slandering us, libeling us, and running around telling people all sorts of made up stories, fabricated stories about who we are. Uh, whereas we are upstanding, outstanding people in our communities, we are being maligned and um, defamed as uh, pedophiles, prostitutes, um, possible violent extremists, possibly mentally unstable, um, dangerous people who need to be watched at all times, and in fact, who need to be electronically surveilled at all times with 24-7 electronic surveillance. And of course, perhaps they don't really tell the neighbors what that really means, but, you know, I, at this point in time, I do think some of my neighbors do know and are indeed fully engaged in this kind of assault on my body with their little, you know, tra tracking and radar, uh, through wall surveillance radar weapons. So um, I'm very disinclined to see my neighbors as innocent at this point in time, given the, you know, the plethora of vacations and incidents I've recorded and documented um, from them, you know, emanating from their homes and from their actions etc directed at me but this is this is uh but we can lay the blame gerald is suggesting at the fbi's door that the fbi is the one you know they're a powerful federal group so what they're doing is they're going to federal magistrate judges which are sort of domestic court judges you know district court judges getting these court authorizations wrongfully arrived at highly corrupt judges handing handing out these authorizations and waving these court orders in front of the noses of you know the neighbors the local police the local fusion centers and generally putting abroad the wrongful notion that uh, we need to be rightfully surveilled for reason of our anti whatever activities that they are making up and in fact we should underline at this point we who are being attacked we who are being targeted we are very pro community pro people pro humanity pro human rights and we are always acting and speaking out for others so in other words, what the FBI is doing is criminal. They are engaging in fraud and they are acting like just bald faced criminals engaging in lies. They are spreading lies. So I really want to put out a, a flyer to inform the neighbors that the FBI is spreading lies and is engaging in defamation. I think that information needs to be put out on flyers and literally dropped from airplanes and helicopters as somebody, you know, suggested or from skyscrapers. They need these flyers need to be littered all across the streets of America. 
the America needs to wake up to the fact that the FBI is not a clean organization, is not an upright organization, and is not working for the public good nor for the good of the country. In fact, quite the opposite. It is targeting innocents, such as myself. Therefore, that's the flyer that I had in mind. So that was one of the big revelations from that interview that I wanted to present. And then the other one was, you know, the global disease surveillance system, which blew my mind. The fact that there is such a surveillance system that intelligence agencies are keeping tabs on people with communicable diseases and this info is in databases and it's being passed on from country to country as you visit countries, you know, and this is, and this is why intel agencies are, you know, coming after you elsewhere. So it's the means by which they can track you apparently, you know, it's like one more means of coming after you, not just calling you hazardous, possible violent extremist, possible terrorist or whatever, known as suspected terrorist, I think is the list that they've got, the FBI, KST. But they can also now say, oh, you know, in possession of a communicable disease, um, kind of, you know, really kind of sleazy kind of person who's got this horrific sexual disease um, and needs to be watched. I mean, what absolute nonsense, right? What absolute nonsense? I, so, Actually, you know what, just briefly, because one thought just flashed through my mind. Do you remember the Zika virus nonsense and the Ebola nonsense? Oh, so yeah. isn't that already predictive programming for the fact that uh, they will just say, oh, there's this epidemic and there's this, I don't know what, the, the gray groundhog you know virus that's now spreading to everybody this is why we need to put half a million people onto these lists and mm -hmm. we need to track them every single absolutely everywhere we need to track all their sexual partners that's why they have to, we have to put uh, i don't know what chips into their vaginas uh, right. you know uh, and right. uh, this is why we have to um you know and in the end people will i would say be artificially infected because that's what happened to me i had you know an infect shot into my neck they'll be infected with something artificially to feed the military and industrial Nazi Correct. complex. Correct, exactly. And you know, that is indeed what Gerald Sosby was pointing to. He said he is basically saying, and he's written an article about this, and he's pointing everybody to it. You can find it on academia.edu. Um, he's basically saying that they are infecting people. So, you know, actually, when you talk about the Zika virus, the Ebola virus, Catherine, and, you know, there are so many other viruses, right, that have hit the, the airwaves recently, the um, H1N1, the swine flu, et cetera, et cetera. So first we have the Naval Bioweapons Lab kind of churning out viruses, right? And then you have the CDC coming along with these rules about, you know, we've got to keep track of these people who've got these viruses. So we prevent a pandemic. And we've got to, you know, uh, concoct a bunch of rules and regulations in, in order to regulate that pandemic when it actually hits so that we can protect the public. And so by these means, they are engaging in further and further surveillance, further and further holds on the population. And that kind of is what um, Gerald was pointing to. And, you know, he was he used the example of AIDS. And he also mentioned that another thing they do, and, and I guess, Catherine, you, we know about this, right? Love int. What else do they call it? Human, loving, you know, honeypotting people, sending, you know, glamorous men or women across your path or just not glamorous, just men or women across your path so that they might enter your life and they might enter your personal life and thereby you might enter the global disease surveillance database. Absolutely. And and you know what? Um, I think what we have to realize is that the sexual perversion of these psychopathic degenerates comes first and then they think of reasons why they need to perv on absolutely every woman's vagina or every man's you know phallus and that's how it works that's the entire logic and then they will just spread diseases they love to um, torture people they love to see people suffer because they're sadistic degenerates and then they just create this basically it's one big porn industry it that's all it is it says there's no point to it you know i this is absolutely revolting and um when when you, if you doubt that this is the case, you have to look at victim cases, you know, and then you will see the same pattern over and over. What I get a lot from victims is that they say we are being shot at with um, small darts, you know, like micro darts or nano darts. Um, stuff is being shot into our skin, then we get um, infect infects in that area, so infections or, you know, some sort of funguses, I think, uh, fungi, whatever they're called. Um, what else do I get? Yes, um, contagious diseases, stuff being sprayed from aeroplanes over entire villages. More this gallon. is all. 
Yeah, yeah, more gallons. More, trail, more gallons, et cetera. So, and that's the disease yeah. aspect of it. You know, they're also shooting biomems and animems into people, right? And you do get those lesions and so forth. And then mm -hmm. after that, when they hit you with the pulse shots, it's that ultra film technology, I think, which suddenly gives rise to that intense subdermal heating. Yeah. So this is the kind of stuff that the intelligence agencies are up to. This is the kind of absolute abject massive criminality that they are engaging in you know so at this point in time i have no mercy you know um, i'm so grateful for people like gerald sosby who step forward and say the fbi is doing this because yes i want to take that and i want to run with it and i want to inform the whole world look gerald sosby is telling us the fbi is doing this and please wake up people there are many many people who are being destroyed their lives are being destroyed in their communities and their neighborhoods people with productive accomplished lives valuable precious lives are being destroyed by these absolute criminals engaging in these satanist satanist and satanic uh, behaviors of you know sharpshooting people with biomens and nanomems uh, human trafficking them into the most obscene military projects and you know we need to tackle that as well the us military and other militaries around the world are engaging in obscene, barbaric, savage human experimentation, very much Mengele style. And we need to, you know, talk openly about that. Uh, so I believe at this point in time in pointing the finger where it needs to be pointed and naming the agencies and organizations that are involved. And we need to kind of rip the veils from our eyes. These agencies are not, the FBI and CIA are not working for Americans. The U.S. military is not defending America. It is not defending the USA. It is engaging in actions of offense. If the U.S. military can engage in actions of offense against a group of Americans, think about where we are today. Think about what's really happening. We are existing in a state of tyranny and despotism and dictatorship is really what it is. You know, so we kind of need to kind of wake up and start um, speaking openly about these things and no longer letting them get away with it. No longer. You know, mainstream media, as we know, is like a big PR arm. It's the PSYOP propaganda arm of the U.S. military and these agencies. So Absolutely. It's Actually, just one thing I wanted to interject, because um, as I'm trying to work around uh, what to show people as you're talking, I just uh, opened the, um, so it's, um, okay, again, my web page, but uh, here under FAQ, I have listed, as you were saying, that these agencies are involved in large-scale crime and do not do the things that we expect them to do. I opened the high-profile affidavit section of my website on the FAQ part, and there are, you know, affidavits, signed affidavits uh, from high level intelligence agents uh, like William Binney for the NSA, Ted Gunderson for the FBI, Gerald Sosby, I've, I even have three of his affidavits up. Um, there's an interview with Carl Clark, MI6, um, in the German press with English translation and Andrea Davison, also I think MI6, um, who blew the whistle on weapons to Iraq and child abuse. And uh, here are actual written affidavits. So it's not just um, a gut feeling or theory or something we say, everything Ramola said is borne out by these affidavits in great detail the satanism the brutality and the absolutely unbridled criminality absolutely and Catherine thank you so much for putting those affidavits together we do need them all in one place so everybody can have access to them uh, many people on the web I know many people with different sites many activists have collected some of these um, affidavits so it's great that you've got them all in one place and um, certainly you know what they point to is that whistleblowers are so important in our society today they're so important to humanity mm -hmm. If it weren't for these, you know, good men and women of conscience and integrity from inside these agencies, the rest of the public would really be alone in trying to fight this fight for humanity, for conscience, for integrity, and for, um, you know, for the revival of good in our nation, nations again. again. But um, it's wonderful that these whistleblowers have stepped forward. And, you know, I laud and applaud and thank every single whistleblower from every one of these agencies who's taken the time to write an affidavit and put this information out there and really kind of get it across to the world that this is the truth of what is going on. You know, so I think we are working together, even if at this point in time, some of these whistleblowers are not indeed speaking out for those who are targeted and those who are being over surveilled and being hit with electromagnetic weapons because this issue of weaponry apparently is um you know 
questionably, of course, is within the classified world. And so un there are so many who are afraid to speak about it openly. But there are others who have mentioned it, you know, so we have to be very grateful. On the subject of Gerald's interview, by the way, I want to give a shout out to Jeff Godwin because he just sent me a revised version of the uh, video that I did with the, um, you know, the transcript created as subtext or subtitles and a title and everything. So he's really um, created a, a video that people can play and actually see the subjects because as everybody knows by now that audio was massively sabotaged. So it happened, I got it just this morning and then I did a podcast with Jeff. So I haven't had any time to upload it, but I'll do it right away as soon as I get off the air today. Um, so oh, and fantastic. I, so, so what you're saying is that so as you're talking, I'm showing your um, Ramola D reports YouTube channel, and um, I've just pointed people to. And you said Jeff Godwin. I just found his interview here. So uh -huh. Jeff Godwin in London. And I think what you're saying is that um, sorry, just just so I could get it um, right. Um, that it's the audio that was sabotaged. Um, it's the one with Gerald Sosby, right? That audio correct, was sabotaged. Correct, correct. I'm still yeah. talking about the Gerald Sosby interview. Yes, the audio was sabotaged big time as we were speaking. Gerald couldn't um, do a video. He didn't, you know, he feels his computers are all messed with uh, constantly. So I think his computer's broken. He couldn't use a computer. He used his phone and, um, you know, I didn't do such a great job recording it. And um, when I played it back, it was actually much worse than I had thought. So I just uploaded the file anyway, because I thought it was a very good and very focused interview. Mm -hmm. And, you know, very important disclosure. And I spent quite a while doing the transcript, pulling out the transcript. Um, you know, and I didn't use one of these automatic software things because they don't, they'd miss most of it anyway. And I had heard the interview, so I wanted to kind of be the one to do it, and I did it. So it's out there, and various people have offered to subtitle it, and I thank everybody. Uh, somebody from Susie Dawson's team uh, who's in touch with me offered to do it. I thank you very much for that, David. Um, but Jeff has done it, and we will post it shortly, and it will be out there so people can see that interview. So I think the transcript is very important. And so I put it out there. So this is excellent. I mean, I think people underestimate just how much work goes into making your videos, you know, because uh, you do the interview, you have some preparation time, and then after that, you often have to um, iron out the sabotage, you know. And uh, I think when yes, people very see, often. <laughs> yeah. And that is, I, you know, everybody who's done video um, editing knows that it's hours and hours of work. So what Ramola does is she really works hard, you know, I, in ridiculously long hours, you know, while trying to, uh, you know, run a family and, uh, and take care of her daughter. And, and I'm I very behind. I'm very behind. You know, I want to write articles for every video. Susie Dawson's great interview. I still haven't written it up. I'm going to do it. Um, I have intentions. <laughs> My intentions are always a little late. You know, I just I'm not working as a news um, outlet over here. Yeah, more is a feature outlet so um i'll put it out there eventually i will i promise so, so. I, i've actually just found a way to show you ramola i think i oh. <laughs> i remembered i remembered how to do you know to 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 a system judo on the sabotage i will just share my screen and look at you and then people can <laughs> see you talk. oh that's too funny that's too funny Yes, i remember we did that once yeah yeah it, it so, actually okay. works quite well <laughs> Oh my goodness, I see that. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so I wanted to, you know, that's one big thing. So do look for the uh, revised interview with the subtitles, with the audio transcript, um, you know, put in the subtitles shortly. I'll put it on my front page as well as load it onto my um, YouTube channel and Vimeo channel. So because, of course, you know, at this point in time, I'm trying to set up separate channels given all the censorship that's going on at YouTube right and the digital banning and so on you know before we jump to julian assange actually i wanted to talk about that one story of the youtube shooting did you hear about it catherine no. the woman oh no. you didn't hear about it okay maybe you want to look it up okay just just google youtube shooting and, I, and, and you probably will find it i just don't know the name of this woman who did it um she's supposedly iranian or turkish or something but very interesting story because she was running like a health and fitness channel, okay? And plus, I've seen a little bit of her video. She's a bit of a comedian and a bit of a clown. And um, she seems very, you know, attractive. And apparently she was getting a lot of views and then her views fell away. So she got really mad about her views falling away, right? And she made a video saying, you know, YouTube is banning me and censoring me and so forth and saying my videos are pervy and such, you know, 
she was doing exercises and well you know she's a fitness person doing exercises plus apparently she's um she loves animals she's against animal cruelty she's a vegan there she is there she is so <laughs> i was just thinking about that you know here um okay i'm vegan you know i'm against animal cruelty and lately i've been talking about the my youtube channel and the views falling away <laughs> And the fact that I don't have any numbers in comparison to various other people who have fabulous numbers for, you know, people watching these videos. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I think I can see what they're trying to do here. This you is, see? This yeah, is and so unbelievable. I mean, oh, first of all, first of all, uh, sorry. I mean, okay, just, just very briefly because I've been studying cartel signaling just so much. Yes. Uh, she has an odd face shape. Uh, I hope she's real and it's not just computer generated. She but looks I, very computer generated. She looks too perfect to be true, but she, who knows? <laughs> I, I, she doesn't even have a jaw. <laughs> but one of the things that strikes me are these skulls on her necklace. Oh my God, are those skulls? They, well, they look like little yellow skulls to me. And then the other thing. Yeah, that so that's my question. Fire, yeah. Who the is fire. this person? I mean, is she a setup? Oh, and she's got fire. And she's yeah, got yeah. two pillars of fire. That's Masonic, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're getting good at this game, aren't oh. we? I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, what yeah. shooting at YouTube headquarters? Oh, hang she on, wait. supposedly. Okay, supposedly. Okay, supposedly she has a family. She has a brother. She has a mother. And supposedly the family told police that you know, oh, she's been railing against YouTube. She may do something. And then her she was found missing. And then her car was found miles away. And then, uh, okay, so you know, excuse me, a vegan health and fitness freak who's, who loves <laughs> animals, who loves life, who loves herself on video, is going to run out and get a gun and start Look shooting. At this. She's computer generated. I mean, no way. I mean, with the still image they can make a computer generated image look real but i mean look at this but look at the storyline there's a brother there's a family you know they reported her missing they think she's gonna go do something crazy she's this supposed to be yes look at this just look at her she's computer generated this is a computer generated woman <laughs> Well, you have to listen oh to some God. of her videos and it's, you know, you have to kind of probe these articles to find her videos now because they've taken all her videos off on offline, I think, but they you find them here and there through Facebook and through other people's posts. Uh, highly so entertaining, funny. I must say, watching her. <laughs> <laughs> But do you see how, what a setup this is? So now they have a female shooter. Now, when did we last have a female shooter? Do we have any memories of a female shooter or is she the first? I, I, I don't. In the West, you know, in the it's nice. It's nice that we have equal rights, you know, with safe <laughs> shooters as well, you know. <laughs> so we have a female shooter and oh boy, let's really go for it here. Not just is she female, she loves animals, she's vegan, uh, you know, and she's got this great body and she's teaching people how to take care of themselves and all this other stuff. And she's got this accent and she's Iranian or Turkish or something. I mean, is she Iranian? Is there some issue with Iran over here that we are looking at as well? Oh, hang on, hang on. Yeah, let's check, let's check. <laughs> <laughs> this is priceless. I mean, by now, I, I just, I love totally. it. The you first know. thing I saw was, you know, here's somebody raving about her numbers. Okay, I don't rave about my numbers because, frankly, you know, I don't have much faith in YouTube. But I certainly have made comments about numbers to various people. Jeff Godwin and I did a podcast where he talked about digital ring fencing and shadow banning. So, you know, we all know that those of us who are putting the truth out there, we are being shadow banned and digitally ring fenced, etc, etc. Oh, um, oh, here, here. Look, 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 Ramol. I've just found something. So yeah. CNN is working to confirm the authenticity of the website. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So <clears throat> here, police are investigating a website that appears to show the same woman accusing YouTube of restricting her videos. There I mean, gosh, the police go. needs to there. learn what a computer generated there icon looks like. But, but wait, this is good because they say the so CNN is working to confirm the authenticity of the website, which lists four YouTube channels one in Farsi, so this is the language spoken in Iran, one in Turkish, one in English, and one devoted to hand art. Uh, wow. Hand, hand art, to <laughs> a hand job. Okay. <laughs> what? I mean, the cartel signaling here is just priceless in itself. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just and find it so. The storyline, right? The storyline is like, you know, YouTube is engaging in massive crime here, censoring people and engaging in freedom of speech suppression, okay? Taking away people's expressive rights. 
And then that's the real situation. People's websites are being taken down. People's channels are being taken down. And then you have this concoction and creation of a YouTube, supposed YouTube shooter, somebody who's freaking out about her videos being taken down and somebody going off with a gun, you know, in very much the same style as all the other active shooters. They get a gun, they march into headquarters somewhere and they start shooting randomly. I mean, oh, for heaven's sake, you know? <laughs> Can any of I mean, us believe this? I mean, are we all insane? Do any of us buy the story? You know? So Ramola, I've got an idea. I've got an idea how we can all just cycle out of this desperate quagmire we're in. I think as a writer, you should apply to the CIA as the scriptwriter for the next uh, fake shooting and come up with something <laughs> more imaginative. And you can have a female character, you know, or, or better still, make the make the character not just female but also a lesbian to be more inclusive. You know, <laughs> how about oh, yeah. uh, a ginger? Uh, I don't know what a ginger. Uh, half ginger half albino lesbian female shooter you know <laughs> to be all inclusive here oh yes uh coming from morocco perhaps and wearing a hijab so <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> probably not in morocco but you know one of another country uh just to be inclusive so apparently they did say oh there was a shooter and she had a hijab in this case you know and they, then they said oh no no they she didn't have a hijab that was a different story it was this person you know it was this this woman um <laughs> so well i think they do get confused after a while you know i mean when you have so many fake stories to keep track of you, you you're yeah. like are we on the story with the hijab or are we now smearing you know iran or are we smearing pakistan who knows yeah. you, you know, know what i heard when i heard of the story and the first thing i looked at it i was so shocked i saw the you know the obvious connections over here and the storyline that was being developed and i thought you know some of the questions that, that crossed my mind are one is this a real person and two did is she uh you know if she's real i really can't believe that she would go and get a gun and do this kind of thing so what are we supposed to think was she killed is she real and was she killed by these people who are running these false flag ops or was she part of the setup you know was she an insider uh is, you know is she a patsy is she a manchurian is she mind controlled what on earth you know what's the story here what's the real story here you know and I think these are the kinds of questions many of us are asking today. So yeah, um, I, think, I think we should all ask them and then look at the actual images. And my personal first, first initial <laughs> assessment, my very first hypothesis is that this woman is computer generated. So the CIA or the FBI is telling us that the computer generated image went into the YouTube headquarters and shot three real people in YouTube. No, I think a, a made up person went in a made-up story to the YouTube headquarters and shoot, shot three made-up people. How about that? I would settle for that story. Yeah, and you know, the next the next story, the next thing that's going to come down the pike is hashtag YouTube matters, you know, save YouTube or YouTube lives matter or something like that. <laughs> you see, that's what we're trying. That's what they're trying to establish here, that we should fall over and care for these tech companies that are destroying our lives over here, you know, that are destroying and are behaving like massive censors and gatekeepers and so forth. So definitely wanted to talk about that a little bit the other big topic of conversation of course catherine is um what's happening with julian assange so now you were you've been in london right you've seen the ecuadorian embassy i just got through a conversation with um jeff godwin he was telling me that the embassy is in a very plush part of london and uh, you know other embassies are very close by and yet obviously julian's being held in one room in that embassy he's got four walls to stare at he's had 20 mi minutes of sunlight over what seven years and if he steps out he's going to be arrested and he's going to be arrested for jumping bail. And, you know, Jeff made a great point. And it's that, um, what, 20 million pounds have been spent to keep um, Julian imprisoned in this fashion, you know, to keep around the clock MI5 and police presence. Can you imagine? What on earth? Is this what MI5 does? Is that what intelligence is in Britain? Uh, well, Ramola, I can answer that question straight away because uh, MI5 has kept... Uh, pretty much the same tab on me, not just around the Ecuadorian embassy, but around Europe uh, with the help of MI6 for the last, what, uh, since 2011, certainly for the last seven years with me. So, I mean, if Julian Assange costs the taxpayer that much, I would love to know how much I cost the taxpayer 
and how much in you know sex trafficking and i don't know what biomedical trafficking i make them in return so yeah i mean i can certainly i i know that in my five does exactly that they do so that's recruit a very good people. point actually you know just to dwell on that for just a second they're spending huge amounts of money just to attack people that they are targeting you know so this is kind of outrageous what kind of world are we living in when you have these intelligence agencies which are paid by the taxpayers right aren't they paid by the taxpayers they're part of the british government right well um now this is the thing uh the payment and this is the key uh on on first glance okay the very first glance uh you think they are being paid by the government mm -hmm. on the second glance you think no they're being paid out of black budgets which are the cartels ginormous money pools which are for example what has been stolen from hud uh that uh, sort of the sums that catherine austin fitz has reported ab um, about then what has been stolen from the eu that uh christopher story aka edward hall has uh, been reporting about and here in switzerland we have a guy called uh harry uh, hoichi and he's re um, reported about social um, security insurance being stolen here through the uh, stock market and various uh, funky means but absolutely staggering sums have been stolen here as well so on second sight uh one would think that these people are being paid out of these black budgets and uh, that's where most people stop uh then if you take a third sight you realize that actually all of money is entirely digitally created by means that are so complex and so on purpose woody woody woo that no one can actually say what money was genuinely created and what was created totally for free by the crime cartel aka the banking cartel and um aka the intelligence agency military industrial complex cartel so uh, what they are doing actually right now is that they are generating digital money uh in a way that is outdoes any sort of money printing ever before in history so i think it's fair to say at the current understanding i have now is that it's not even the black budgets anymore they have just detached themselves from financial gravity and i just freely floating off into the universe generating any money digitally that they want because you can always make money pop out digitally in some sort of offshore you know pff, unaccounted for tax haven i mean who's going to tell me you know if a chunk of money that comes out of barbados has an actual origin or was just popped into existence in barbados you know i think yeah, this is so, what it is. so it sounds like money is flowing and coming from two or three uh, very strange and suspicious places. On the one hand, you've got the black budget, so it's all being kept secret, it's being kept classified, it's, you know, under the table, it's hidden in that way. And then you've got, you know, sort of the traditional ways in which they've been whitewashing and laundering money, right? And that's literally under the table, kind of, that's the black market. Exactly. And and I guess the one thing that's uh, missing is just uh, this is an aspect that is just free money generation. It is literally digital money printing that doesn't even uh, have the pretense of having any sort of accounting, you know, trace. And um, let's remember who we are talking about. We're talking about MI5. We're talking yeah. about a British intelligence agency, you know, so which is supposedly connected to the British government and is supposedly working in service of the British government and in service of the British people. But in reality, that is not what is playing out at all. Actually, I, I have a, a wonderful link exactly on this topic because um, people probably know that I put out uh, this claim that um, <clears throat> you have the City of London, um, the actual City of London inside Greater London being owned by the Crown Corporation, which is a front for the Vatican, the Vatican crime empire, and so on and so on. And, um, you know, some people are skeptical and uh, there are still so many traces everywhere that leads lead back to the crown corporation and when you look at the intelligence world it's it's uh, notoriously hard to get at reliable information but every once in a while you can actually glimpse uh, you know a little detail and um, i would like to give you some a clue to uh, you know that this is exactly what's going on and it, it beautifully fits into this um, you know uh, what we're talking about now but i've just remembered one thing and this is um, let me just say it as a footnote so what happened to me, and I, I should have announced it in the beginning, is that my PayPal account got closed. 
okay it still exists but it's under lockdown and uh, melanie and i we put out a, um, a call for uh, funding crowdfunding uh, to be able to afford another scanning session for um, non-consensual body implants and when the money was together you know uh paypal locked my account they locked literally over 1500 swiss racks this is a lot of money but we need a lot of money i think we need a thousand two hundred euros per day of scanning in brussels so okay that was locked um and then i called paypal and i said look why have you done that and then i got a you know a list of reasons and i'll explain why paypal actually matters to what i'm about to say about mi6 so number one was oh um you are security risk you know um you were involved in money laundering oh no, no actually this is something i heard first time from customer service then they said Oh, well, you know, you have collected um, donations, but uh, you're not allowed to collect donations. And then I said, what? but you you have donate buttons that you let people generate. Yeah. And, and then they said, uh, yes, but it's only for registered charities. And I said, well, this is not how it appeared on your website. Besides, why do I have to register? I checked with tax That's authorities in Switzerland. We all have donate buttons. I yeah. have button a paypal donate. exactly so then they said okay well you know if you cleared it with swiss authorities okay fine uh but you use the donation money to um to make transfers into your bank account and i said yeah because you can't pay for everything with just paypal for example i, I had to buy myself this is the truth i have to buy myself a radio protection curtain this is lead okay two meters by one meter 20 just to be able to sleep at night as shielding and it costs about a thousand euros and i had to pay it from a bank account because they don't accept paypal and then they said yeah okay but you also use paypal to pay for services i said yeah but that's what paypal is for and then they said oh you can't tell us that you are you know using donations because i we can see that you paid for netflix and I said, yeah, because Netflix and Hollywood movies are part of my research. Oh, my Even God. Minority reporters here, they are actually keeping tabs on what you're doing with your money and the exactly. answers. I, I, I was loving it because I was about to put out several videos where I'm actually commenting cartel signaling that is also relevant for geopolitics. And it's information that only appears in Hollywood movies as part of cartel signaling. And you will never find it any, in any of the Council of Foreign Relations reports, really. It, it doesn't exist anywhere, only in Hollywood movies. So I actually said on the phone, listen, I mean, my Netflix subscription is not for my entertainment. It is because I'm doing work, okay, and I can prove it. But one of the things and this is how i'm uh, you know getting back to this one of the things that you can find on netflix and now i come back to mi5 and what who they really are and how they're funded um it's a it's an actual documentary by the bbc and it's called in her majesty's secret service okay and that i spotted on on netflix and that's one of the documentaries i watched and it's about mi6 now then after that i realized i don't even need a netflix subscription i'll just show you um uh, you can find it on YouTube, and I encourage everybody to watch it, okay? So uh, this is the BBC documentary from 2015, and it says, uh, oh, it's, it's called Secrets of Her Majesty's Secret Service, okay? So this film, it's here on YouTube in full, it has these absolutely fantastic nuggets. And one of the nuggets that it has, um, let me just go um, to the actual point here, is um, I, so first of all i mean just the cartel signaling in the architecture in london that's something you know in itself but if i may just play this um within the very first uh, few moments you will find wonderful nuggets about what mi6 actually is and and was from conception because this goes back um to the very beginning to the history of mi6 so let me just play literally just 30 seconds and that will answer a lot of questions and and now i invite everybody who's listening try to get through lateral thinking try to get as many clues out of this clip as you possibly can uh, by the way can you hear this on your end is, is this sorry i don't i don't hear the audio oh okay oh i know what the problem is let me just pull out my um headphones and i think i have to i have to play it on loud so hang on let me just go back a second were near the corridors of Can you hear that? Yes, yes, I did hear that. MI6's first headquarters were near the corridors of power in Whitehall. 
but few in government knew the agency even existed. Where we are now is where the earliest headquarters of MI6 is, and that's up in that tower. To Whitehall Court is the foreign section of the Secret Service Bureau. It's where Mansfield Kame set up his early headquarters, and throughout the First World War, that's where what we now call MI6 was based. Mansfield Cumming was the first chief of the service. He was a naval officer who would go on spying missions wearing rather bizarre disguises. His office was a laboratory of strange gadgets and devices. He was very innovative. He was one of the first people in Britain to take his pilot's license. He had a special license plate for his Rolls Royce, which allowed him to drive up and down London streets at any speed he wanted to without being stopped by the police. He was a real character. His staffing and interview methods were uniquely gruesome. He had a wooden leg, and when he was recruiting new officers, he would frequently take his penknife and stab it into this wooden leg. If the officer didn't flinch, he was just the right man to work for Britain's Secret Service. Cumming knew that good agents were the most important tool in the spying game. From the very beginning, he understood that it was all about collecting intelligence and recruiting and running sources. From the very beginning, that's what he did. Just in the bloodstream. So... Coming disguised Oops. his organization's true activity. Um, if I if I can just, I'm not sure if you, did you wow. manage to hear all that? Yes, I did, and I heard all of it. Wow, really shocking. So, exactly. Now, oh gosh, I mean, this is... Where, just, where do we start, really? <laughs> where, do, where the hell do we start? I mean, is it this office? Is it the double pillars on the, you know, around the windows? And then, uh, I mean, when you're listening to this, uh, you know, his, his interview method. So he's got a wooden leg, right? And then he has a pen knife and his habit is that in the interview, mm -hmm. he just stabs himself in the leg as an into mm -hmm. the wooden leg. And then it says, if the interviewee didn't flinch, he would mm -hmm. be fired for MI6. Now, what does that tell us? Exactly. Is that is that collecting intelligence or is that collecting assassins, people who don't flinch? Exactly. So what this is, is this is a psychopath test. So when you're doing suddenly something that's injuring another person, if you don't have instantaneous empathy with the other person, you are by definition a psychopath. So he is by definition recruiting psychopaths and as you analyze, right? Serial killers. He is recruiting serial killers. So with this one, you know, three second statement, they can already, they have told us that from day one, they all they did is recruit assassins, serial killers for an organized crime mafia. You know? Secrecy, brutality, savagery, all behind closed doors. And please don't call it intelligence, whoever that was at the very end making a comment, you know, saying it's in the bloodstream. Oh, excuse me, it's not in the bloodstream and it's not intelligence. Oh my God, I'm so glad you're saying that because Ramola, may I introduce you to, uh, let's just go back, let's just go back to that gentleman. Uh, th that's actually very, very important. I know we've seen him before. I'm sure you've introduced him to us before. Oh, just yes. Yeah, this uh, John Scarlett. And that's ah, the we go. John uh, Lord Sumption, Lord Jonathan Sumption has, I think, human trafficked me and sex trafficked me because Lord Sumption, um, who was his university, uh, you know, uh, contemporary at Magdalen College, both studying history, Lord Sumption stalked me in Oxford and in Munich. <laughs> And, you know, when you went to uni with the guy who became head of MI6, I don't think it takes, uh, you know, a massive leap of imagination to find out how you could stalk a young woman, maybe 40 years your junior, uh, you know, in different parts of the world and find out her private address. So, yes. In no, my because book, they're running a stalker's game because, you know, they're secret service after all. They, they trade in secrecy. They have nothing else to do with their time but just to go around playing with the population. Exactly. Absolutely. And um, what is just so telling is that, um, you know, so now I realize, you know, what Jonathan Sumption is doing in his free time, you know, I realize, and then also he's, he's famous for writing massively long history books. And then you think, mm, 
him? Did he write it or did he recruit juniors, you know, through MI6 um, who maybe got blackmailed? Um, yeah, well, it has to be established. But anyway, you know, with all this writing, being a high-flying barrister, a judge, and then, you know, writing massive tomes in history, he still had the time to stalk me. Okay, so that sheds a different light. But as soon as you then work back and you find out what's also being said about um, Sir John Scarlett, the fact that he is in a big satanic sex cult, according to, I think it's uh, Henry Makoff's um, website, where they are saying MI6 is one massive sex cult uh, and death cult, uh, as in satanic death cult. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, it's the same with, you know, what's going on inside the CIA and NSA and FBI. Absolutely. I mean, you know, when if you if people Google uh, satanic uh, sex cult uh, UK government, um, I think, uh, let's, uh, hang on, cults, there's somewhere an article um, by him um, who, uh, that actually says, uh, let, me, let me find it, um, yes, here, uh, uh, let me share my screen because this is going right to the heart of it and then we suddenly begin to understand what intelligence actually is. So um, if you Google satanic sex cult UK government and Henry uh, Makoff, uh, here you get this article, sex cult runs UK government, says MI6 victim. Okay, now being an MI6 victim myself, I'm, <laughs> I'm inclined to believe that person. But mm. you know, it, it implicates Sir John Scarlett and um, you know, the other um, ex-MI5 slash MI6 uh, heads, you know. Um, and uh, what, what the, what's being described here is absolutely gruesome, you know. And it's just about sex, about sodomizing, about cutting people up alive, uh, you know, torturing children, weird sex fe fetishes. Uh, yeah, it seems to be about uh, killing and fucking, which is the staple <laughs> business of the mafia. Absolutely. And you know, and yesterday, Dr. Karlstrom and I were doing this podcast. I'm yet to release it because, again, this was another podcast where I, which was heavily interfered with, um, where we talked about precisely this in the intelligence agencies. We, well, we were talking especially about MK Ultra and the CIA, but we also talked about how British intelligence literally gave rise to the CIA, you know. So it's the same kind of thinking and the incredible traumatizing of children and um, all of the beta programming and the delta programming and the sex kitten programming that children and young women women were subjected to and young men as well through the Montauk project and through various other projects of trauma-based mind control uh, through MKUltra and Project Artichoke, etc. Um, it, it comes down to this is what the intelligence agencies have been doing with their secrecy. They've been engaging in massive brutal experiments on humans. Absolutely. And I guess the one thing um, that um, occurred to me, you know, bit by bit is that I realized it's not even um, human experimentation. What they have been, uh, what they have taken on from day one um, is the core business of the mafia, because the mafia was in killing and mostly sex trafficking. OK, so it, they traditionally they run the brothels, they like, um, run gambling parlors and, and organized crime, everything that has really high return, you know, and it's shady enough that it's not taxed and so on. So that's why, you know, I say they are running the sex business and the killing business. This is this is the two core um, uh, businesses. So when you suddenly find heads of MI6 recruiting serial killers, and, uh, you know, there are victim reports that uh, these other heads of MI6 are running sex cults uh, and assassins. Uh, you think they are running the mafia. They, how come MI6 got into the core business of the mafia? You know, this is the question to ask. That, and, uh, is, that is the mafia. And I think certain mafia families were actually involved, right? And definitely in the, the, the case with the CIA. Uh, oh, absolutely. And I actually, um, I'm not sure if I maybe, um, if I am allowed to share another few seconds of this clip, maybe it's set here, but there's another key, an actual clue here that says it all. So let me just uh, play it, um, just, just 20 seconds. Beginning. That's what he did, just in the bloodstream. Yeah, yeah, right. You know. Right, really. Cumming disguised his organization's true activity by pretending it was an import-export business called Raisin, Falcon and Co. Front covers. Yeah. To this day, MI6 uses fake companies as a cover for its clandestine operations abroad. Yeah, I met some of them. Cumming has created other traditions still maintained by his MI6 successors. He brought with him the naval tradition of the captain writing his log in green ink. Even now, the chief of MI6 still writes in green ink because Cumming did. 
His most famous legacy, however, is his signature. Coming was given the title of C as a cover. It was simply the first letter of his name. It's obviously where M in James Bond comes from. And even now, the chief of MI6, as he's now called, signs his letter with a C. So, hang on a second. What are we hearing now? So, <laughs> did people take that in? So, coming has been credited with bringing this tradition to MI6 of, first of all, writing in green ink. I, I mean, open brackets, this isn't camp at all, right? You have Sailor Boy who likes to dress up in all sorts of outfits and the next green ink, you know? I mean, what? Okay. Yeah, what am I? Yeah. And then he signs his name with C, and this is why all subsequent heads of the mafia, <clears throat> MI6, yeah. <laughs> uh, sign themselves also with C because they are they so adored that one you know legged sailor boy, uh, no. pirate from days of yore with the wooden leg. With Star the wooden leg, I don't think so. So what they what the hell does C stand for? It stands for the Crown Corporation, as in the edict. Whatever you know, the head of MI6 decides is not his decision. It's the decision of the Crown, which is not even the royal family. The crown is the crown corporation, the ultimate crown, the papal crown of owning everything in the world, you know? Mm -hmm. So C stands for crown, it's the crown corporation. So if you have MI6, you know, and, and helping or, you know, setting up the CIA, what does the C stand for? It's not Central Intelligence Agency because as um, Sean Ross, the historian pointed out, it's not central. The CIA is not central because it's CIA Langley. That's what they always say. It's not because the central is here in Switzerland. That's central. Ah. CIA is the C doesn't stand for central. It's the Crown Corporation in America. That's what CIA is. <laughs> the Crown stands. in America. Yeah. Ooh, that would work, actually. Exactly. That makes perfect you know, sense. The Crown in America, Langley, that's their branch office in Langley. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, an older branch office is MI6 in London, but the oldest branch office is where the frickin' Templars settled when they were kicked out of Jerusalem, which is, you know, the last batch of killing, serial killing mercenaries, rapists, you know, they settled in Switzerland. It, it's, it explains a lot about the Swiss, I guess, but, uh, you know, so we've got the, the actual HQ here because the Vatican is too small. You just have got a bunch of gay pedophiles and that's it, right? So, but mm -hmm. Switzerland is big, it's a fort. So you've got central, central intelligence here. Then you've got the Crown Corporation, you know, kind of little sapling thing, you know, tumor mm -hmm. sites in London. Uh, there you have MI6 and uh, this clown, you know, with the wooden leg signs for the Crown Corporation. And then you've got the Crown Corporation in America. That's how it is. And everybody's actually just a front organization for the mafia. And then with one fell swoop, you've explained why they signed with C. You know, you explained everything. You explained why they're in the business of sex trafficking and killing. And suddenly when I come along and I say, oh, I seem to be sex trafficked uh, by the head of MI6 for the entertainment of his university friend, and they're killing my family, it makes total sense, mm -hmm. you know. You know, one of the things we talked about yesterday, Dr. Karlstrom and I, you know, this podcast will be out, is precisely what you are touching on over here, that, you know, it, they are engaging in mafia-like operations. And in fact, what they are doing is they they cover up their crimes with more crimes. And I've never understood how this worked. But I think there are people, for instance, the writer of the book uh, Project Artichoke, which I'm yet to read, but I sort of skimmed through it a little bit. Um, he's talking about the Zodiac Killer, you know, in the US, which was a bunch of serial killings. And they, those, um, the killings that was to take uh, was to take away or to new well not neutralize that's such a the a wrongful word really but to but to literally kill to vanish and disappear the witnesses to the um rfk assassination 
you know, um, John uh, Kennedy's brother, so Robert Kennedy. So that assassination. So in other words, that was a cover up. And then you have uh, Dr. Carlson was talking about 9-11 um, and the gang stalking that's going on today. And he was kind of putting the gang stalking and the kind of tyranny in our streets and the takeover of our streets and neighborhoods as kind of being a direct correlation and outcome of 9-11, this massive false flag op that's you know conducted by people inside the government inside these intelligence agencies and in order to cover up that crime and to prevent any scrutiny of that of that crime and prevent any accountability for that crime they take over the entire country and they take it over through you know hitting the neighborhoods through the fusion centers through establishing what 76 fusion centers acro across the country and literally establishing mafia rule or totalitarian police rule within our neighborhoods and our communities and using um, targets targeted individuals as nodes and scapegoats around which entire communities are being organized and structured and being repressed and lied to this is this is brilliant because i think that goes exactly to the heart of it and uh and then we we can suddenly explain everything that we observe we can explain all these serial killers you know why they are working so professionally actually i i, I a while ago i tweeted out one serial killer in inverted commas um it was the um uh, this lady aileen uh her surname starts with w but i forgot uh Wernos or something like that so i have to look it up but um she was in jail and she said before that she was a prostitute and there's a you know just before she goes to be executed there's an interview with her where she talks about being mind controlled and she says and they let me kill all the others you know so and she she also emphasizes i didn't have any training i didn't know what i was doing so how come i could do it you see that goes back to the, the trauma-based mind control and the mk ultra and what they have done with alters you know the did and the multiple uh you know breaking up people into their alters through extreme traumas the people splinter and fragment into different personalities and then those other personalities are hidden by programming and uh, with trigger words so that they brought out by trigger words and they're being used for killing you know which was part of the mk ultra program and the manchurian candidate program that we have some you know a lot of analysis and disclosure about currently so that's that's the truth that's the real gory horrific ghastly truth about these intelligence agencies that we need to start pulling up and keeping before us i think and you know in connection with that is also the death cult catherine and that's i think where i'd like to kind of take this conversation so that we can bring it back to julian assange um the death cult the war, death, and destruction cult, which has given rise to the buildup of the massive MI squared C industry, you know, the military in intelligence industrial complex, right? They have set something in motion that is so huge that they think it cannot be stopped and should not be stopped. And they're doing everything they, they can not to stop it. And in order to do everything they can not to stop it and to continue their massive profits in that direction, they are torturing and scapegoating and destroying us, the activists, the journalists, those who speak out, the truth tellers, the people of conscience and communities. They are trying to completely suppress conscience in our communities, trying to suppress good in our communities so that we all mindlessly go after the war machine. And they're using patriotism and the word patriot in the most execrable of ways, you know, in the most wrongful of ways, um, trying to get consent and trying to get support for their ghastly war machine to be continually rolled out. And WikiLeaks and Julian Assange come in there and say, well, let's just take a look at this, shall we? Let's just see what war is doing to humanity and to the earth and to people. And, you know, that I think is what uh, Julian Assange has brought to us. So it's so, so very important to understand that. Actually, the, you know, the case of Julian Assange has another aspect that points the finger right back at the mafia or the, the, the intelligence agency. Sorry, I just use it interchangeably by now. Um, I, and that is, look We're at with you on that, never fear. <laughs> And, and look at how the, the takedown operation of Julian Assange has been uh, played out. What playbook did they use? Uh, and, and I say it always comes back to it. it when, you, when you're trying to analyze cartel signaling or strategies or, you know, their tactics and methods, it always 
gets back to it. They are in a certain line of business and there are certain things that they know best because they've been doing it since like 50,000 BC. And that is, sorry to use the word, but fucking and killing. And I use the word, the F word, because for me, there's making love, there's having sex and there's fucking. And the mafia is certainly in the third category. Never the other. Yeah, they're using it, you know. I mean, they've got sexual ritual. They destroy people, you know, using old and, you know, black magic and occultism is connected with that as well because they seem to get some power out of out of sex and so on and so forth so you know it's very bizarre it, it is and and you know with the julian assange case they used again honey trap entrapment and trying to smear people with sex it's never like oh tax evasion or i don't know what you i mean yeah with me it's like oh you parked your car in the wrong place yeah but because that's the only thing that can come up with me you know but uh yeah, it's it's always the same stuff. It's um when you look at these government figures, they are always compromised with sexual stuff or because they had a hit job with somebody, or you know, drugs. Sometimes it's drugs, you know, that's also a staple business of the mafia. But when it's the sort of entrapment operations, uh it, it's just written all across, you know, their signature. They they only have one handwriting. And the same when you look at victim Absolutely. cases. Absolutely. They have one protocol, one strategy. I mean, look at the active shooters, right, for that matter. They've got one little card that they're playing over and over and over. It's not even a card. It's a strange and bizarre protocol or strategy they've come up with, and they're playing it over and over again. Absolutely. And and uh, it, what's, what's so amusing is that any intelligent person, given the same amount of resources and time as these people, could come up with so many other better stories, but somehow they are incapable of doing that. And I think it goes back to the fact that the people who get into that mafia line of business are brain damaged, you know, like, uh, what's his name, uh, the uh, the neurologist, the American neuro neurologist who showed these scans of uh, psychopaths' brains. I mean, the entire frontal lobes are dead, you know. They don't have the same sort of creativity that we have, but, you know, they manage to survive throughout the you know millennia being psychopaths and this means that they must be really good at reproducing and killing other people to survive so anything to do with that they really understand anything else they just kill off because they just don't understand it you know and the victim cases mirror it one to one exactly because the victims typically com complain about sexual assaults being microwaved being shot with pulsed energy projectiles or being chipped in the genitals uh, sex trafficking, sexual mutilation, being forced uh, to, to, you know, into erections, into orgasms, that sort of stuff, which is bizarre. I mean, you're using what forced orgasms as political control. I mean, that's really, who came up with that? A psychopath came up with that, you know, somebody whose core business that was. And then typically victims get um, death threats, you know, assassination attempts and all that. And it points the finger so straight back at these organizations it points the finger straight back at men like sir john scarlett you know and coming and uh these people who are clearly you know utterly deficient in their in their head it's yeah it's, it's it's at a point in time you know where we are dealing with absolute psychopaths who are doing extreme harm to all humanity they're doing extreme harm also to national security and in fact you know gerald sosby brought that up in and in at the end of our last interview and i'm hoping that the next time i speak with him we explore that a little bit further because literally these intelligence agencies and these militaries by assaulting civilians by assaulting their own country's people are endangering all of our national security you know and we have to explore that question a little bit in greater detail another time i think because we're kind of coming to the end of this program but um you know ultimately we're dealing with as you say a sex and death cult which is wreaking death and destruction all across the planet and um, it behooves normal people to stand up and speak out against it and with, with the case of julian assange i think that we are all reminded that we need to start asking ourselves what we each stand for. Do we stand for death and destruction? Do we believe in supporting and endorsing and promoting this um, war machine? Is that what we want? Or are we going to open our mouths and start speaking out and doing something? I mean, every single one of us, in whatever sphere of action or influence we may exist within, you know, we need to start speaking up and standing out. Uh, sorry, standing up and speaking out. And, um, you know, we are living in a surveillance state, no doubt, but we have to ask ourselves the question, do we really think we're that powerless? Do we really think that we can't, you know, get in front of a camera just as Catherine and I are doing and, and speaking our minds about the nature of surveillance today and what's going on today and why Julian Assange is being still held in the middle of London? 
in, in you know in what uh, you know is obviously a gross human rights violation as jeff is pointing out so we need to ask ourselves these questions and we need to start taking a stand each one of us you know this is i think at this point in time we need to start acting individually as people with responsibility and start speaking out and i and, and it's, i see one of my tasks over here is to do what exactly what catherine is doing closely analyze what the intelligence doing intelligence agencies have done historically are doing currently and um you know what exactly it means for our communities our society and our world Oh, absolutely. And uh, I, uh, yes, I, exactly. I, I, I can only second what you said. And this individual responsibility is something that we have to bring back because uh, it has been eroded away in many, many ways. For, for example, in the olden days, lawyers used to have an individual liability for anything that they screw up. And then they started introducing, uh, what's it called? Uh, these uh, limited liability partnerships, uh, you know, for lawyers. And now they can just ride roughshod on absolutely everything. And uh, their personal assets are not in danger. And I think this massive global pro problem has to be tackled in many, many ways. Exactly as you said, by going public, by just making videos, and we should encourage everybody to follow suit because, hey, what we pulled up, anybody else can pull up as well, right? We need more people. Absolutely. We need mushroom. And look at what you can do when you get together and you analyze a few of these videos. I mean, you know, just express yourself for heaven's sake. I'm sure there are some very smart people out there, you know, and I'd love to hear what they're thinking. Oh, me too, actually. And, and one of the most... Uh, I don't know, invigorating and, and productive things is to listen to other smart people's opinions and, and be enlightened and be surprised and learn from them. Mm -hmm. And more people to come forward and actually fill the void, you know, and we need to march over all these people like YouTube and their censorship and PayPal and their freezing off accounts and all that sort of stuff. And we need to march forward. And then also, I think the personal responsibility and, and actually the personal liability with their private assets has to be brought back to these intelligence agents. So when we have stuff like that, when we can show that cases are starting in the UK and being smeared internationally uh, by some intel means, then we have to go back to the heads of MI6, and currently that's Alex Younger, you know, and ask hard questions. And I think he has to be personally, imagine if Alex Younger and Sir John Scarlett and Lord Sumption were held personally liable with their private assets, which in the latter case is staggering, I'm told, uh, for the things that they have done. Because I don't think I'm the only woman, the first woman to be ever sex trafficked by these people, mm -hmm. you know? So there must be absolutely armies out there. And the other thing I want to say is, um, you know, you, we all have to stop being so impressed by them. Exactly. I agree with you. And you know, this mystique, this aura around surrounding the names of these intelligence agencies, that's got to go. I'm sorry, you know, they've been building PR for themselves. And I think it's time for us to do some truth PR over here. So that's what I'd like to call it. It's not bad PR, it's truth PR. Let's do some truth PR for these intelligence agencies. Let's do some truth PR for the US military. Let me spotlight your infamy once and for all. Let me show the world exactly what you are doing. You know, is what I'm interested in doing. And I think what all of us need, need, need to do, we need to sort of take the blinkers off our eyes because there's a lot of, you know, patriotism, secrecy, classified labels, national security, massive miasma, fog being, you know, blown in front of our vision. And we kind of need to sort of blow out of that, uh, clean the air and start seeing clearly, you know, start seeing clearly what these intelligence agencies have been doing, what they have pulled off. You know, they are occupying positions of power currently, and they are doing this under cover of secrecy. It's secrecy. Secrecy kills. Kill secrecy. That's my new hashtag. You know, kill secrecy because secrecy is destroying our lives, the lives of humanity around the world. You know, so we need to really challenge and oppose and protest against secrecy, against these classified labels, because crimes, absolute crimes are being kept covered up. And I think perhaps the way is to go the way of liability. You know, those notices of liability, for instance, that the in power movement is doing. We need to look at personal liability and begin to hold individuals accountable and liable. Oh, absolutely. And we also have to um, ensure that judges really, um, you know, act the way they should. One of the things I tweeted out is a very, I think it's the Irish Parliament. And uh, one of their uh, parliamentarians pointed out that in, in Ireland, the um, all the barristers and the judges are part of one big secret organization. 
you know, with their own holes and so on and so on. And they are not accountable to anybody but these this secret organizations swearing allegiance to all sorts of stuff, but not what they should be swearing allegiance to. Um, so absolutely. And, uh, you know, one of the things is I have to say the Net Netflix subscription was the best investment of my donors. But um, one of the things I want to flag is there's um, currently a series um, because, you know, the brainwash starts with the children. So children programs are very important. And I would oh, like yeah. to point every brainwash in our children. Yeah, and, and one of the things that there is something called Spy Kids. I haven't seen that movie yet, but I find it already the title really worrying because it's this kind of like fetishization and coolification, for lack of a better word, of the Intel business. And this is not what it Intel is, is about, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. John Scott no, it's like the spy it's like the spy museum in DC, you know, which I visited. Yeah, it is the coolification of the spy business. And it's the cover up as well. It's the gentrification of the spy business, which is about assassination and killing, as we know, historically, Absolutely. among other things. Absolutely. And when you think about the fact that what's being glorified is actually mafia operation, which is sex trafficking and murder. There's nothing cool about the spy business. And from a systems analysis point of view, anything that's secret will become criminal with time. So it, it goes without saying that our secret organizations are criminal organizations. But what's really worrying, and this is something I'm analyzing right now, and I'm, I'm trying to invite more investigators to do the same, is the kids' TV series um, called um, Lemony Snicket's uh, Series of Unfortunate Events. And that is mind-bending. When it's you actually know... When you, but there's an actual, there used to be a feature film, and that was uh, interesting and had a lot of uh, covert signaling. It's almost like now there's a series, and now the cartel's really moving in and actually almost turning around what the original film, you know, kind of the message was. But you have a lot of cartel signaling. You have the all-seeing eye plastered everywhere, but you especially have the glorification of Intel work, of secret codes, secret organizations. Oh, yes. oh we're so, so special. Ooh. And when you teach children that, of course, they're going to get hooked on the secrecy and the mystique of it, you know. But just like I discovered that um, Oxford was sold to me as this, you know, very mysterious, very cool, very amazing place. And then I go there and I realize, oh, my God, you know, I mean, when you become a fellow, I very quickly thought these people have a serious screw loose, you know, uh, <laughs> pretty much everybody here, you know no offense to my old colleagues but then i realized as you're peeling back the layers oh hang on this is a front for the crown corporation you know and then you peel it back a bit further and you think oh my god this is mi5 and mi6 and then you know oh my god it's the mafia i, I was working for the mafia and mm -hmm. people died in oxford people were murdered in oxford around me and i didn't twig it at the at the time so you know that's something for another time but um at that's the end a great of focus. Yeah, I think we, we should pursue that. That's a great, great focus. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. You were oh, no, no. I, I actually wanted to cut myself short here because I realized I'm blithering. But one of the things is that um, it was really shocking for me, and I, I kind of fell out of all clouds when I realized what Oxford actually was and and you know what it actually stands for, um, because there are so many great things about it. And then the question is. What do you do? I think we have to do a salvaging operation. And I use the example of Oxford and, and CERN because I know these places very well. But other people know hospitals or the government or any sort of institution. And we have to run a salvaging operation. We have to kick out the criminals. We have to take what's good, cut away what's bad, and build completely new organizations on those, those foundations that have safety features mm -hmm. against human fallacies you know, and, and human frailties. Yeah. And, you know, as we're doing that also, I think just as you want to look at the children's movies, the children's films and so forth, and how the children are being inundated and inculcated and indoctrinated in these ways, you know, what I'd like to look at is, you know, the whole war industry and how our young people, of course, you know, are also being inundated with war imagery, right? And they're being taught from early on that it's okay to fight and it's heroic and, you know, the super soldier and the soldiers and, you know, that kind of thing, the glorification of war is what I'm especially concerned about. And when I look at, for instance, the collateral murder video, which I watched in its entirety recently one night, and, uh, you know, I was horrified because clearly it shows a level of conversation among the people engaging in the so-called battle. They just went full steam ahead and they were egging each other on and they were just 
you know, shooting innocent people. They did not even determine accurately if those people were armed. They made up a story. They were looking for, you know, their supervisor to give the go signal and to shoot. And they ultimately killed. I mean, it was tragic, right? We've all seen that collateral murder video. I recommend that everybody go back and watch it again. You can find it on YouTube. Just, you know, type in the words collateral murder. And you can see for yourselves how these soldiers are talking to themselves and what they are doing. If that is war, I'm sorry, but every single one of us needs to know what the inside story of war is all about. And I think that is why, you know, WikiLeaks and Julian Assange to me are super, super important because what they have done, the, the great favor they have given to all of us is that inside look. You know, they've brought us the information. They've brought us the footage. Um, they've brought us the, you know, the insight into the goriness and the carnage and the savagery and brutality of war. Um, war is not human. And so, you know, if we want to become true humans, you know, living um, in connective, harmonious societies, war should not absolutely ever be a part of it. And um, therefore, you know, I think that's something for us to keep in mind as we move forward. Um, and hopefully everybody can come out and, you know, do something for Julian Assange as well. Keep an eye on what's going on, start speaking out, become public about it, because um, Julian Assange is being held as some kind of bizarre prisoner of humanity, really, you know, he's a, he's a, being he he's a prisoner of conscience in a sense he's a prisoner he's our conscience he's our humanity is being held captive in a sense through julian assange and that's something if we begin to see that clearly perhaps people will begin to act in their own ways and we can bring to an end this lunacy you know somebody put out a tweet the other day asking uh president trump to just pardon julian assange to get this end ended and perhaps that's the way to go you know to do that to ask for that or to support that Absolutely, uh, to pardon and maybe another way is also for the population to start taking these people who are generating these extra totally superfluous, uh, you know, expenses for the government, take them to task and say what you're doing is totally out of proportion. I personally look at these people as a cannery in the gold mine and they, um, well, we are not going to be fine unless they are fine, you know, and and it's great that you mentioned the, the glorification of uh, of war because one of the the things that were leaked i think by wikileaks so yes um that was the um wasn't it the chelsea manning uh footage uh that was these uh us uh soldiers uh, yes that's the one that i'm speaking about the collateral murder with you yeah oh oh sorry yes okay sorry because for a second i thought you were referring to uh to um Yes, sorry, I thought at the time that you were referring to a Hollywood movie. Yes, exactly. So when you see these people, how they're talking and how they're, it's, it's as if they are, they, they are running a computer game, you know? Yes, exactly. And this guy is singing to himself. You think he's totally cuckoo, you know? He utterly lost his mind. Shocking to me to watch that. Yeah, absolutely. And then when you look at, you know, these so-called documentaries on MI6 and in your face, they say, well, yeah, from, from day one, we've been recruiting mentally damaged serial killing psychopaths. Uh, you know, it all makes sense. And then you think, well, hang on, do you really trust your medical data and your emails and your bank account details and absolutely everything that these psychopathic serial killers have got themselves the right to? Do you really trust the mafia with all your private details? And then when the mafia starts killing you and your family and, and grabbing your assets, are you surprised? You know, and I think yeah. at that point, we have to go back and we have to, be, you know, actually, this is this is the one, the biggest advice I have for people. When I went up to Oxford, uh, in my first year at some point, I met somebody and he, he's, I, he said, how is it going? I said, look, I'm really intimidated. Everybody's so clever. I'm doing really shit. Uh, I'm really struggling. And he said, well, that's normal for Oxford, you know, so it's okay. Uh, and then he said, my advice to you, if you want to, you know, survive Oxford is this. The golden rule is never be too impressed. Okay. <laughs> This That's a great line, actually. This got me through Oxford. It got me into into and out of CERN and into you know the uh, senior common room of St John's College and out of it. And that's exactly it. Never be too impressed because the person who's upping themselves, you know, opposite you, being the interviewer, might just be a totally damaged serial killer. You know, are you really going to be impressed? And then when you reach that stage, you know, instead of being impressed, think about, you know, comeback lines. I mean, you've got this old. Uh, probably gay sailor 
uh, signing his name in green ink and thinking he's so clever because he puts, I don't know, a monocle on and, you know, uh, drives like a maniac through, uh, I don't know, the high street. Uh, and then he puts a knife into his thigh. I mean, we all have to sit back, you know, take a bit of chewing gum and, and look at it and, uh, you know, think about what would you say in an interview if this guy stabbed himself in the, in the leg? You know, I mean, the expectations that you think, oh, my God, so impressive. And then you really should say, listen, granddad, how about I take the knife, I do that with the <laughs> other leg, and if you don't flinch, I'm not going to tell anybody what a big Nancy boy and a massive fraud you are. You know, a freaking psychopath. You know, and by the way, where did you get the gammy leg? You know, was it the bird yeah. wars or was it the Napoleonic wars? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, seriously. These people are just, they are damaged. They are damaged. They, they are, and they have maintained a hierarchy over time, Catherine. Think about that. We are talking about, this is also patriarchy in action. These are hierarchies in action, you know, where boys and men have been kept in line over centuries, generations and centuries. And they're, of course, using the same tactics on women too. So the women now in intelligence agencies also belong to hierarchies, belong within hierarchies and behave in this fashion with each other, no doubt, you know? Oh, absolutely. And you know, as far as, as far as women are concerned, I mean, I'm just saying for women, this is totally unnatural because actually for women, the natural state is to be a lone fighter. I mean, most women don't form street gangs. Men do. Men hunt in packs. But women think for themselves because they have to and they have to take care of their own children. So women are usually very good lone fighters and street fighters, you know. So I'm just saying to all these ladies, it looks like uh, the, the world has been taken over by, by massive psychopathic uh, uh, masturbation clubs, male wanking clubs. Uh, are we really going to sit back and let ourselves be raped and, and shot in the vagina and, and have our ovaries microwaved by these psychopathic degenerates who are then leching after raping, you know, babies, cutting their heads off and raping young boys and girls? Is this, this what we're going to stand for as women in, on this planet? Are we literally going to say, no, I would rather take a kitchen knife and cut his off? How about that? You know, I'm not saying you should do that, metaphorically speaking. But you're very welcome to have a, you know, a war crimes tribunal and decide that this guy's head should be cut off. That's okay, you know? And, you know, really, you're not exaggerating because these weapons that these men have developed, you know, these uh, very wrongfully named non-lethal weapons are indeed weapons of extreme mass destruction and extreme bodily destruction and physical destruction. And they are weapons of sexual assault. So in other words, you have the U.S. military and the militaries of the world developing weapons of sexual assault, weapons of bodily assault. That's what they've developed, and they're using it on civilians. So, in a sense, they've sort of, you know, over here, they've created the they've, the seeds for their own demise. Because why did they not imagine that people like you and I would not step up to the fore and start speaking out about the ghastliness of these weapons? These weapons need to be banned for all time because they are invasive in the extreme. And, you know, if you take it from there, to me, it almost seems that when you look very closely at the horrors of electronic weapons, which is these like electromagnetic weapons, which are weapons of sexual assault, among other things, uh, you're basically, in a sense, beginning to look at that trajectory of all weaponry, really, what all weaponry does. All weaponry destroys and kills, right? And you have electronic weaponry that destroys and kills at a very intimate level. It, in, it destroys at the level of the bone, the nerve, the skin, the cell, etc. You know, so I think by this means, literally by developing these electronic weapons, I think the militaries of the world have established for themselves the beginnings of their own end right there. Because I think people are going to increasingly see how ghastly these weapons are, how ghastly all weapons are, and how ghastly war is, you know, and right. I think it's going to happen. I, I really hope so. And you know what? I, 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 um, I think so. What I will start off with tonight is, you know, literally, I think uh, next thing is I'm going to distribute these 100 of these letters and I invite people to do the same because that's also individual li liability and individual responsibility for our neighbors. Uh, hopefully that will wake them up. You know, it has a reference to the techno forum. And uh, I just encourage people to start uh, their own YouTube channels and do exactly the same thing and point their neighbors to it because we have to wake them up and we have to stop being so impressed by their secrecy and their stupid codes and 
Oh, gosh. Absolutely. And this is why it's along those lines that I wish to do those FBI flyers. You know, I'm not impressed by the FBI. I'm especially not impressed that they're going around telling stories and lies about me in my own neighborhood and my own community. And I'm going to show them that I'm not impressed shortly, you know, with some flyers and with some writing. My yeah. favorite thing to do. So. I think you know, you, you, these guys have got you know a license or no license to kill, and, and you've got a license to kill. You know, with pen and paper. I, mean, I think. Well, we'll... Remember, the pen is mightier than the sword. Shall we say that again a few times? You know, we don't need weapons. We can write. Exactly, especially when you're writing a you know a writ uh, for court. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> On which happy note, perhaps we should bring this conversation to an end Absolutely. and uh, wish all of our uh, viewers a happy morning and um, a wonderful day. And we'll see you again very soon. And I hope we can connect the call, you know, from your end. <laughs> so see you next week, guys. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye for now. See you later. Bye-bye. Stop. <laughs>